Chiori, in my opinion, one of the most beautiful characters to ever grace us in Genshin Impact, has just released. Now look, I've been head over heels hyped for Chiori since the day she was announced. I don't care if she's Geo, I don't care if she's Nouvelle at levels of Broken, I will have one of the best Chioris the world has ever seen. So I promise you that this guide was made with the care, the time, and the dedication of a Chiori main looking to maximize her to the fullest. As with all my character guides, it will be everything. I'm talking the kit breakdown and need to know tips for best weapons, best artifacts, best teams, all our constellations, everything you need to know about Chiori is going down right here. For this entire video, Chiori will be at level 90 with talent levels 888, holding four piece golden troop and her signature weapon. So Chiori is a five star Geo sword sub DPS character. She brings off field Geo damage to the team through her automaton dolls that she summons. I'm just gonna call them puppets throughout this video. So let's start with her skill. Chiori will dash forward and do a slice dealing damage based off her attack and defense while also summoning her puppet Tomato. Tomato will strike a nearby target with Geo damage every 3.6 seconds, also scaling with both both attack and defense. Tomato lasts 17 seconds, so this means Tomato will attack five times per skill. Also, if a Geo construct exists or is created during Chiori's skill duration, a second Tomato will be summoned. This Tomato will also attack five times, so effectively doubling the Tomato damage. We'll go over Geo constructs more soon, but there are two more very special things about Chiori's skill that we need to talk about. First is a quick one. It can be held and aimed just like Kaching's skill, for example, so that's cool, but the big effect comes from her first ascension passive, Tailor Made. So after using Chiori's skill, you can choose two different options. If you click her skill again, she will switch to the next character in your roster, so the order of the team comp matters here. And it triggers the tapestry effect, indicated by this pretty flower around the character. This makes it so Tomato will do a coordinated attack with the on-field character when they do a normal charge or plunge attack. This damage is equal to the damage of Chiori's initial skill cast, which is called the upward sweep, which is quite a bit stronger than Tomato's regular attacks. This coordinated attack only happens twice per her tapestry effect and will only happen every two seconds. But now the other option is if Chiori chooses to do a normal attack after her skill's initial cast, she stays on the field and triggers the tailoring effect, granting her a geo infusion to her normals for about five seconds. So let's talk about her normals next then. It is a super clean four hit normal attack with all right multipliers. These are obviously only physical hits unless we infuse them with geo from her skill, but even then they aren't gonna be doing huge damage. We'll talk about that a little bit later. And for the last of her three main skills, her burst. Her burst is absolutely stunning, but extremely straightforward. It does one huge burst of geo damage based off her attack and defense, that's it. But it has a low cooldown of 13.5 seconds and a very low energy cost of 50. So this burst will be up consistently, quickly, and the range is also very massive. So make sure to weave this in when you can. Then her final two passives are as follows. Her Ascension 4 passive, the finishing touch, grants her 20% geo damage bonus when an ally makes a geo construct. And her out of combat passive, if any party member has a skin equipped or a wind glider that isn't the default one, the whole party gets a 10% movement speed buff. This doesn't stack with the animal resonance speed buff and as much as I'd like to make a pay to win joke here, just switch the wings, dude, and get the speed buff, all right? So as I always like to do, let's go over some need to know tips about Chiori's kit to help you master her playstyle. It is time to clear the air about her dual scaling though. Look, I already said it, dual scaling, not split scaling. Split scaling is something like Albedo, where his skill scales with defense and his burst scales with attack. Now, split scaling usually sucks because if you're investing into one, you're not investing into the other. But with Chiori, all the attack you get will help and all the defense you get will help. This is dual scaling and dual scaling is very cool. This also means that stats like crit rate and crit damage are extra important for a character like Chiori. Let's take Diluc, for example. His defense is useless to his damage, so he needs to get some attack and then, of course, crit stats to amplify everything. But with Chiori, since her skill takes from both attack and defense, her baseline value values of her damage are already a bit higher and don't require as much extra investment as the Luke might with Wolf's Gravestone. So with dual scaling, the logical highest damage boost you can get is from your crit rate and crit damage. You want attack and defense, you just don't need to stack up a ton of it, okay? So dual scaling is cool. Since I just mentioned Albedo, homie caught a stray, let's clear this up now. Does Chiori power creep Albedo? Yeah, kind of. They are both off-field Geo sub DPS characters, so they do the same role, doing the same kind of damage. It's very easy to compare them. Chiori, even without a Geo construct to summon two dolls, out damages Albedo just by a little bit, but then on a team with a Geo construct where she summons two dolls, she outpaces Albedo by a ton. 
So pretty much any team that Albedo worked on in the past, Chiori can work on now, and unfortunately outpaces him by a little bit to a lot. But don't let this discourage you, my Albedo fans out there. He's still solid. All right, I just had to let y'all know. So first off, for the need to know tips, her puppets are not Geo Constructs, which I think is an absolute win. There will be no worry about her puppets being destroyed by enemies or by creating too many Constructs, but this also means that one puppet can't be the Construct that summons another. The puppets can also be moved by pushing them with your character's model in case the enemy is slightly out of their range. And on the topic of Geo Constructs, here is a quick visual of every Geo Construct in the game, so keep them in mind for the Teams section. Something to note is that on average, it seems that Chiori will generate about five Geo Energy Energy particles per skill over time, which is pretty decent. It can help battery some of those on-field geo carries like Ito, Noel, or even Navia. And finally, Chiori's puppets do not snapshot. This pretty much just means that Chiori has to be on the field to gain the buffs from Goro's defense buff or Bennett's attack buff. It's honestly a bit of a shame. Now for a quick rundown of Chiori's basic rotation. First, drop her burst immediately for the damage, putting it on cooldown, use her skill and tap skill again to bring in your next character. This way, Chiori did her burst, summoned her puppet for the team and the character coming in has the two coordinated tomato attacks queued up from her skill and just rinse and repeat when your burst and skill are off cooldown you can create a geo construct at any time and don't need to create them prior to chiori hitting the field but it will help sync up the double tomato time to put that into perspective the character she switches to can create the construct like ito and ushi ningguang or geo mc or you can begin the rotation with jongli's pillar and get two puppets up immediately and a final tip to note here is to be careful of spam mashing Chiori skill when you're playing her. If you're spamming the skill button, you may switch to your next party member and use their skill immediately when you don't want to, like with Ido throwing Ushi before he bursts or Zhongli not holding his skill for the shield. Shoutouts to Zajef of warning people of this uh-oh with his video aptly named Chiori made me close Genshin and do my taxes. To end off this advice column, the math is in, all right? At C0, Chiori does the most damage if you choose to do the tapestry effect of her skill, which switches her out and then lets Tamato do the two coordinated attacks over her staying in with the geo infusion once again this is a shame we'd love to be on field swinging the geo swords but that's just the truth so let's get into Chiori's best artifact sets, and there are two that are pretty far above the rest. They are Four Piece Golden Troop and Four Piece Husk of Opulent Dreams. Golden Troop boosts up Chiori's skill damage dramatically, especially when off field, so it is a no brainer. And Husk boosts up both Chiori's defense and geo damage, two boosts that Chiori absolutely loves. Golden Troop slightly outpaces Husk, but I mean slightly. If you have great Husk pieces already, you don't need to go out and farm Golden Troop for her. She will do amazing. After that, we have two piece bonuses of pretty much anything that might benefit her like two piece husk two piece golden troop or two piece geo damage and that is really about it whispers for example just doesn't compare to these set combos and anything with two piece attack is okay but not as strong as the aforementioned options now for the main stats we should be aiming for it will almost always be a defense sands a geo damage goblet and a crit rate or crit damage circlet chiori not only has higher defense multipliers than attack but defense percent sands grant more percent than an attack percent sands does making it the clear choice but attack percent is all right if it's all you have a geo damage goblet is self-explanatory for dps and you should only really consider changing it when you're running her with farina where a defense percent goblet is potentially better then finally crit stats are 100 the play on her circlet either crit rate or crit damage whichever will even out your stats the best as for substats crit rate and crit damage are the first priority 100 defense percent is next followed by attack percent still very useful and then finally energy recharge it's not super necessary necessary but it's not exactly a dead roll if you do get it for Chiori's weapons, luckily she has a lot of options and some of the free-to-play ones are very strong too. Let's just get her signature out of the way, Uraku Misugiri. It's beautiful, it's her best in slot weapon boosting up her defense, skill damage, and granting a massive 88.2% crit damage monsters. But let's take a big step away from the wallet and look at a three-star weapon, Harbinger of Dawn, a weapon that we should all have dozens and dozens of copies of. You didn't get rid of them, right? For real though, Harbinger of Dawn is great. It gives her those much needed crit stats she desires, and 
and she doesn't mind the low base attack so much because of her dual scaling benefits. Just keep in mind, it's not going to be great on a team with Farina where she takes your health below 90%. Next is unfortunately another old event weapon in Cinnabar Spindle. Yes, Albedo's old best in slot weapon. It boosts your skill damage based on defense and gives a ton of defense on top of that. Now, the tricky thing here is the passive. To get the max out of it, you would need to time her dolls to attack about 1.6 seconds after one another for them to both proc the passive. So the turbo gamers will get some more value here, but even without doing that, it is a great weapon option. Next, for my gamers on a battle pass budget, I would recommend the Wolf Fang. It grants crit, raises skill and burst damage, but you won't get the most out of its passive with Chiori off field. It's still great though. And finally, Fest desire yes another old event weapon it's good on her but if you don't have it don't fret because harbinger of dawn does more damage anyway now for five star weapons these are mostly just stat sticks like jade cutter lo-fi haran and miss splitter are all solid options but aren't that much better than cinnabar harbinger and wolf Fang. okay this last one's a bit of a meme splendor of tranquil waters will actually do big damage at max stacks but this would be only on a farina team which means you've either got two tranquil waters laying around or you're stealing one from farina for chi which doesn't really seem worth it to me. Now hold on to your wallets, everybody, because it's time for a new guide segment called C1 or R1. Welcome to the first iteration of C1 or R1, where I recommend to Chiori main hopefuls who want to push their Chioris a little bit farther should they get her signature weapon or her constellation one. So let's start by going over her C1. First, it raises the range of her Tomato dolls by 50%, which is cool, but nothing spectacular. But the second effect pretty much makes it so as long as she has one Geo ally, she will summon two Tomato dolls without the need of a Geo construct. So I agree with the rest of the community when they say that this constellation is a little bit of bait. It will help, you know, those Navia Noel teams get higher damage, but that is about it. While her weapon on the other hand will boost up her damage by a lot on every single team that she is placed on. So in my humble opinion, R1 is the winner here. Unless you're a Navia, Noel, main simp, whatever, go for it. I can't stop you, but I do recommend getting the weapon instead. And for my constellation rating, I give C1 a four out of five. Not needing a Geo Construct to get the two dolls is a very strong effect. It's just a bit of a stingy constellation rubs me the wrong way. Her constellation two, after using her burst, she summons a new doll, Kinu, every three seconds. Kinu will attack once and then disappear. But she does this three times. So three Kinus, three hits, dealing 170% of Tomato's damage. This constellation does add a ton of damage to Chiori's kit. It's about a 30% roughly damage increase for Chiori. So that's a lot of damage, but it's not anything crazy unique added to her kit. So I give it a four out of five. Constellation three is her skills talent level up by three, and this is her bread and butter. So it's obviously solid. I give it a three out of five. Her Constellation four will summon another Kinu doll like from her C2 after she uses either follow-up attack from her skill and someone uses a normal charge or plunge attack. This can only happen three times. So more Geo dolls falling from the sky to add more Geo follow-up damage, this time from her skill. The damage here stacks up again even further and really maximizes her off-field damage prowess. This is a four out of five. Constellation five is her burst talent up by three it's very whatever i give it a two out of five but here we go constellation six before we read it if you want to see some sick nasty constellation six chiori content i just pulled for c6 chiori on my 50k sub celebration stream and i'm going to be making a video about it soon so come follow me live on twitch where i am attempting to build the world's top chiori and of course subscribe to the youtube channel to not miss any of this chiori tent so her c6 is this after using either follow-up part of her skill it reduces the cooldown of itself by 12 seconds putting her skill on a four second cooldown and her normal attacks now dual scale with defense equal to 235% of her defense. So she is now a skill spamming, doll generating, geo on field hyper carry. While I don't think she's gonna be doing C6 at Yalon or C6 Nouvellet levels of damage with this constellation, she's obviously gonna be popping off, okay? And it unlocks a brand new play style for her of being able to viably be an on field DPS carry. Sick constellation, five out of five stars. It's time for the team comps section of the video, and I saved the team comps for after the constellations because of her C1, so we can start with talking about her Navia Noel team. 
So let's just start with those. As I mentioned before, Chiori outpaces Albedo even on teams with no Geo Construct. So a team of Chiori, Navia, Bennett, Farina, or Shangling still operates fine and dandy at C0, but will get a big boost up at C1. If you're using Farina and Bennett isn't enough healing for you, consider Jean or Sean Yan as a final slot instead of Bennett. Also, Chiori, Noel, Farina is a very strong trio to consider. Farina boosts everyone's damage up insanely, Noel heals the entire team while on fielding, and Chiori does big damage off field. The final slot can be tons of options like Bennett, Goro, Yelan, or even construct generators like Albedo or Ningua. You can get creative here, but the base of Chiori, Noel, Farina is very strong and gets even stronger at C1 or partner with a construct making final slot next we have some more free to play friendlier looking teams with geo constructs a team of chiori geo main character bennett and goro works very well with bennett being in paimon's bargains goro on chiori's banner and the mc well being the mc mc makes constructs bennett boosts everyone up and goro boosts chiori up even further with defense buffs and even bonus crit damage at c6 this team would revolve around chiori actually being on field just so she receives all the buffs of bennett and goro but would still choose the swap tapestry effect over the geo infusion effect for maximum damage you can also use this team with ningguang or noel instead of goro for less chiori personal damage but more team damage up to you and of course mono geo is a very solid option with ito being the strongest on fielder as of now supported by chiori goro and usually jungli to have a shield and to have that geo resonance activated and of course, Noel can be used here instead of Ito as well. All right, these teams are really starting to muddy together. So let's take a little step back from all the Geo stuff, shall we? An old favorite team comp of Genshin was Hu Tao, a vape support like Yelan or Xing Cho, and double Geo. This is because Geo Resonance is really strong and it can be activated by just picking up some crystallizers. So Albedo Chiori can work well here together for just tons of off-field Geo. Or Chiori Zhongli can be used for safer Geo Resonance uptime and the big shields. And finally, Chiori can sort of be slotted anywhere if you just want to use her and have some fun. Geo usually won't mess up reactions too badly so yes hyper bloom chiori comps are real or you can just slap Zhongli Chiori onto any pairing of your choice. It won't be too bad. These teams are not going to be top tier but just for some fun you might as well slap those two on give them a try have a good time so as the resident Chiori stan what are my honest thoughts on Chiori right now I think she's pretty decent. I think we all know Geo characters really need a lot in their kit to be top tier characters like Navia's insane damage or Zhongli's big shields and versatility. And unfortunately, Chiori doesn't really have anything that breaks her out of the lack of a better term, Geo mediocrity. But she is definitely a solid character, all right? She does more damage than Albedo, and in a lot of instances, a lot more damage than Albedo. I think that her playstyle of the swapping and the doll generation is pretty cool, but I will admit, I am a little bit bummed that even with the swapping mechanic, there's just not really too much nuance to her playstyle until the higher constellations. I think if you really love her design, or if you are a Geo team comp connoisseur, then you should definitely pick her up. But if you are a little bit more stingy with your primo gems looking to pick up some really big characters that are going to make a huge difference on your account i do not really think chiori fits that bill as i already said though i'm pulling for her actually c6 pulling for her and i'm going to be trying to get a top one percent chiori in the entire world so if you want to live vicariously through me as a top chiori main then please come follow the stream we just finished the three week abyss challenge too so hey expect a video on that very soon and while you're here on the youtube make sure to subscribe all right it makes a big difference drop in the like the comment they help out more than you know and big shout outs to the patrons who support us making the sick nasty content like they always do i'm talking zick Lancy, charlie wolf junon thank you guys so much everybody else on patreon all right i'm gonna go i'm gonna go play with my cc shiori try to get some sick artifacts okay come through I'll see you guys next time. Bye, everybody.